Um, so I've got it running up on the screen here. This is pretty impressive considering the amount of JavaScript that's involved, which is, and it's kind of compressed because I'm using my screencasting screen here, but uh, it's not very much JavaScript. But I think the thing that jumped out at me and that seems to have jumped out at people on Hacker News is that where are these textures coming from? We can see bricks, grass, um, stone, stuff like that, that kind of look a little bit like textures in Minecraft, but how are they coming into life? So what I've done is I've taken exactly the same code, but I've got rid of the game part, kept all this code the same, and if I just expand this, it's a bit nicer. Kept this code the same, but then once the texture map is created, I um, use another canvas that I've created called Texture, and then I take everything from that texture map and I basically just transform it so that it turns into RGB and then the alpha is always 255. And then I print that out. So what we end up is over here, um, we end up with just a really tall texture, essentially, and you might recognize some of the wood and the grass and sea and all that sort of stuff here. So how is this basically working? This has all been generated by this method up here. Function, sorry. There's my rubyist uh, roots coming through. Um, well, one thing that can help initially is if I add in red lines, um, basically, where each different texture is being dealt with. So if I run this now, you can see these kind of red lines across this. This is texture 0 at the top, then texture 1, texture 2. So you may recognize that this is the um, cells with the grass on, and then there's like the rock cells, there's the brick cells, and so on and so forth. So if we head up to the top here, um, what he does is he generates an array that is just a really, just a big flat array essentially, called text map. And then within init, he starts from 1, oddly, I'm not sure why this is exactly, but uh, he starts from 1 and uh, works his way up um, to, um, you know, just under 16. Um, and one of the things that he does here is he sets a random brightness, so that's what BR is, and we'll get to this part in a minute. So 1 through uh, 16, or 1 through 15 in this case, um, match up with these areas here. And this is why uh, area 0 essentially doesn't have anything in it, because if this was changed to 0, then it would, but it doesn't. So, um, as I said, I'm doing this all off of uh, on the fly. So the next thing that happens is each of these textures essentially has... Um, three cells of 16 by 16 inside. So this is the um, what you would see on the top of the grass cell. So if I just quickly drag in this, so this grass here, you can see grass keeps coming along. Well, this first block of 16 by 16 is the top. So like there, for example, there. Uh, the next one is all of the sides. So that's all of the, um, or just all of the sides of the block. And then this darker one is for the bottom. So when you see the block from underneath, which we just wait a second, uh, like there, um, and so on, that's the uh, the darker underneath. And he's done that to avoid having to actually light the scene properly. Uh, there's no real lighting going on here. It's just the textures that are, uh, you know, the, the faces that are pointing down just have a darker uh, texture in, essentially. So if we get back to the code. What he does here is so basically this i variable is tracking what number of texture we're working with at the moment. So this is texture 0, this is texture 1. So what happens within the, you know, he's done the loop over the y and the x. So he's got all the 16 by 16 blocks and here is 16 times 3 in the y because, as I said before, it's uh, 3 cells of 16 tall. And then he goes through the x and he sets each pixel individually. So there's a default color. I'm um, not quite sure what that is. Uh, it's kind of a bluey kind of color, I guess. Because um, these, just in case anyone's not familiar with this kind of notation, if you are familiar with HTML, so you've got FF0000 would be red um, in HTML. Well, it works exactly the same here, just using um, standard hex and, um, notation here in JavaScript. So in uh, texture number four. So if we look at texture number four, so this is naught, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So this is gray, essentially. And all that happens within um, that one is, as you can see, 7f, 7f, 7f. So it's equal red, green, and blue, ends up with a gray. Um, and the reason it gets this kind of weird textured effect here is because of some um, other stuff that's going on here with setting the brightness randomly. But then the more interesting ones are, say, like the brick, for example. So if we jump down to its texture number 
five, for example. Um, yeah, brick is texture number five. By default, he sets the color to this red that we had, so I can kind of prove that by changing, making a little bit brighter red. So you can see now we have really bright red bricks. Uh, but then what he does is he checks this, a few different things. Um, just a little bit of clever uh, mathematics going on here um, for checking for these kind of staggered vertical lines. But then probably the easiest one to understand is uh, Y modulo division 4. So every 4 pixels um, the colour gets put to this kind of grey mortar colour. So if I change the 4 to a 2 uh, and run this you'll see the bricks are much more tightly packed. Um, so I'll let you play with that to understand that, but uh, it's quite simple and straightforward. Um, that's really messed it up, so I'll put it back to four. Um, things like the dirt and stuff is just kind of almost like the brick to a point. There are some differences, but it's basically just saying brown and then have this kind of random noise of uh, brightness um, working that out. Uh, an interesting one is the wood, which I believe is seven. Um, and this is interesting because what it does is the Y within each individual texture runs from 0 up to 16 times 3. So that's, what, uh, 48? No. Oh, I don't know. It's too late in the evening. It's uh, past midnight, so I'm not even going to think about it. Um, yeah, OK, I, I, I got it right. Um, so what he does is he checks to see, uh, you know, X would be in a certain range, which it basically is going to be. Um, but... The important part here is that he checks to see whether the Y is between 0 and 15, or actually between 1 and uh, 14, because he's kind of got this extra line of texture going around the edges of these sections, these square sections. But if you are within a square section, he does some maths to uh, basically work out what the brightness should be in this case to get this kind of uh, wood, you know, sort of rippled effect, wood uh, ring effect. Um, we skip this middle one because that doesn't meet the conditions for this loop and it uh, not this loop this condition uh, and it comes into here instead and then for this dark one at the bottom it's the same score with the top one. So if I kind of ignore some of this stuff, so you can look through these and you can say right, okay, texture number what's this one? Seven, eight, nine. So the C one, for example, is set texture number nine. You can see all it does is it sets it to blue. So if let's say I wanted color uh, purple for my water. That is very easy to change. Um, well, for some reason, I seem to have messed it up. Okay, I've got it back to normal, thankfully. Uh, I'm going to try that again for setting it to purple. So now if I go down, you'll see that uh, my water is now lovely purple. So if you're running the game on top of this, it would look pretty weird. Um, so I'm going to kind of skip a lot of this stuff, but uh, the important thing that I want to just point out before we finish is this kind of creating uh, random noise, uh, which happens at this brightness section here. It takes like a full brightness, but then it subtracts um, a certain amount from it uh, randomly to uh, kind of create this lovely noise that we have. So we have brightness and it gets transferred into another variable called BRR. Well, if we kind of get rid of that randomness of brightness, we just set it to 255 by default, we get a slightly different view of the textures. Uh, much more basic, kind of almost like Zelda on the NES style look over here. Um, so this is our grass now, a lot more simple. Um, and the dirt is just, these are all flat colours now, and the bricks are very basic. Um, and actually, I'm kind of looking, I'm going to play the, uh, I'm going to change this in the main one and uh, see how it looks actually. So if I do it over here, and I go, um, BRR equals 255, and I run that there. Wow, there you go. Uh, so a much more 8-bit kind of uh, style. I really like that, actually. That's kind of cool. So, yep, diversion. Um, so coming back to this, there are some other things going on. Uh, so, for example, you see where there is this dark cell in the third one of every single case. Yeah, it's a little bit darker than the first one. Um, that occurs here. So if the Y is over 32 within that 0 to uh, 47 kind of zone, uh, then divide the brightness by half. Uh, so you could actually just keep it, actually just keep it as 1, and everything would just be flat. Um, there would be no you know, colors, different colors underneath the cells. And again, you could you know, um, you know, triple that uh, darkness, which actually doesn't look very good at all. 
Uh, there's some other stuff going on here with texture number 8. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right, yes. This is the one that kind of looks like uh, grass, um, essentially. I think it's like tree in Minecraft or something like that. Like by default, if I got rid of this code, this will just show you what the case is. Um, it would just be this kind of flat green. Um, he's creating a random number, multiplying by 2, uh, then kind of turning it into uh, an integer. So if it's 0, he will get rid of the colour entirely, and if it's one, the colour stays. So that's why you kind of get that uh, flecked green effect there. Um, but I think I've said more than enough now, and I've rambled enough, and it's like half past midnight or whatever, so uh, um, I will kind of bring it to a close there, but just to you know, kind of close this off, uh, another thing that he does is he deconstructs the colour uh, that he's got from before, um, by basically, because it's like 0x, ff, whatever, he has to do lots of shifting and anding to get out each part of that, um, you know, colour. He then multiplies by the, um, a kind of a, a ratio for the brightness, which is this section here, and then he converts it straight back again into, um, a suitable, uh, kind of 24-bit colour, essentially, and then he puts that into his texture map. And then that texture map is used by the rest of the game, um, it's referred to in various ways. Uh, essentially, you know, it knows what particular tile it wants and what side and what face it needs to draw, and it just pulls from that as necessary. So that's it. No script, just a, a quick fun walkthrough for anyone who didn't quite understand what uh, Notch is up to. I certainly didn't, so um, it was just a, a graphic illustration for my own purposes, really. Um, if, you know, this is the self-promotion bit, check out HTML5 Weekly, which is my weekly HTML5 newsletter, and I have one at javascriptweekly.com as well. And yeah, so there you go.